Hello and welcome to Fun Bikes TV. My name is James and today we're going to be building a Rough Rider electric quad. To start off with we will need to open the box, cut the green banding and then cut the tape on the box to allow you access to the vehicle inside. Once you've cut the tape on the top and opened the box you'll need to rip the sides down. As you can see the quad is inside a steel cage. You'll need a 5 allen key to undo the cage. The fitment box and two rear wheels are tucked in loosely at the rear of the quad. Quad is held into the bottom section of the cage with two cables at the rear and one at the front that you'll need to cut to be able to remove the vehicle from the cage. Now and create our mini quad, you'll have two rear wheels, your front bull bar which was removed from the front of the vehicle and your contents box. Your contents box will include the following items. Your bar pad cover, a bag of various nuts, bolts and fittings, your maintenance tool kit, your charger and your user manual. We're now going to attach the front shock to the lower swing arm, remove the bolt from the shock and then align it with the lower swing arm and replace the bolt. Apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads and then attach the nut and fully tighten using a 12 and a 14 spanner or socket combination. We're now going to tighten the upper shock bolt, again using a 12 and 14 spanner. Once we're happy it's fully tightened, apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. We're now going to tighten the lower swing on bolt using a 10 and 12 spanner combination. Once you're happy both sides are tight, apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. We're now going to attach our front stub axle. To do this we need to remove the bolt from the centre of the stub. Align the stub with the holes in the yoke and reattach the bolt through. Placing the nut on the bottom. And using an 8 allen key and 17 spanner, tighten the bolt up. When you tighten the stub up, make sure you do not over tighten it and that the wheel still turns freely from left to right. Also make sure there is no side to side play at the top of the wheel. Once you're happy it's correct tension, apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. We are now going to attach the outer track hood end. You will need to remove the nut on the end of the stub axle using a 13 spanner or socket. Placing the track hood end over the bolt, replace the spring washer and then attach the nut. Once you have tightened it up, apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. We are now going to repeat the process on the opposite side. Attaching the lower shock bolt, tightening the upper shock bolt, attaching the stub and the track hood end. We are now going to tighten the inner track rod ends using a 6 allen key and a 13 spanner. Once we are happy these are tight, apply a small quantity of stud lock to both threads.
We're now going to make sure the steering column bolt at the bottom is tight using a 17 spanner or socket. Make sure you do not over tighten it and that the steering still turns freely. Once you are happy, apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. We are now going to attach our front bull bar. Remove the four bolts from the front of the bike. Apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of each thread before you attach them into the vehicle with the bull bar. Align your front bull bar and then starting with the lower bolts, place them through loosely at this point. Once you've put the two lower bolts in, move on to the upper bolts and then fully tighten with a 10 spanner. We're now going to attach a handlebar to the bike. You'll need the four long bolts from your various nuts and bolts bag, the four handlebar clamps. You'll find that two of them are flat on the bottom and two of them have notches out for the bolts heads. The two flat ones go on the bottom and the two with the notches go on the top. Apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of one of the bolts. Take your bottom clamp and position it. Place the handlebars inside it and then take the upper clamp and place it over the top. Align the bolt and loosely attach. Repeat the process on the opposite side. Repeat the process with the two bolts of the rear, applying a small quantity of stud lock to each thread and then attaching them in position. Using a 10 spanner or socket, start to tighten the bolts up, but do not fully tighten them at this point because we still need to align the bars. You will see there are notches on your handlebars, which help you to guide the bars into the correct position. They need to be aligned underneath the clamps. Once they are in the correct position, tighten the bars up, making sure that the handlebars are at the same angle as the steering column itself. As we tighten the clamps up, we need to make sure the gap at the front and the rear of the clamps is equal on both sides. Fully tighten all four bolts to ensure that the handlebars are secure. Using the 14 and 12 spanner, make sure the steering boss is fully tight on both sides. Once you're happy it's tight, apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of both threads. We're now going to attach our handlebar cover. It simply pushes on into place. We're now going to remove the chain guard using a Phillips screwdriver to make sure that the chain is at the correct tension and the sprocket bolts are tight on the quad. The chain guard cover itself is clipped into position. As you can see the chain tension is correct on this vehicle, so we just need to tighten the rear sprocket bolts using a 10 spanner. Apply the rear brake when you are tightening the sprocket bolts. We can now reattach the chain guard and replace the two self-tapping screws that help to hold it in position. We're now going to tighten our rear brake disc bolts, again holding the rear brake on and using a 10 spanner or socket to make sure all four bolts are tight. Using 17 and 14 spanner, make sure the mounting brackets are tight on top of the rear swing arm. I also check the ones underneath are tight as well. Apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads once you have done this. Using a 12 and 14 spanner, tighten the lower shock bolt. And then tighten the upper shock bolt. Once you're happy both of these are tight, apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. Using a 14 and 17 spanner, make sure your rear swing arm is tight.
Once your happy is tied, apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. We're now going to attach the rear wheels to our quad bike. Remove the split pin, castle nut, washer and spacer. Take your rear wheel, you will see there are direction arrows on the wheel. When the wheel is placed on the bike and the arrow is at the top, it wants to be pointing forwards. This is the direction the tyre will spin on the vehicle. Reattach the spacer, washer, put your castle nut on and then fully tighten using a 24 socket. When tightening the rear wheel, hold the back brake on to stop the rear axle rotating. Making sure that your castle nut is aligned with the small hole in the axle to allow you to replace the split pin. Once you have the split pin fully inserted through the axle, bend the end over and apply a small quantity of stud lock. Repeat this process on the opposite side. Using a 10 spanner or socket, make sure your rear brake caliper is tight. On both sides of the rear bar, underneath the seat, make sure that, that is tight using a 10 spanner or socket and apply a small quantity of stud lock to the end of the threads. We're now going to use a 10 spanner and a 5 allen key to make sure all the plastic bolts around the vehicle are tight and secure. Be careful not to over tighten any of them as they are only plastic and it could cause the plastics to snap. We're now going to level off our brake levers. Using a 3 allen key we're going to loosen off the throttle unit and rotate it downwards. Then using a 5 allen key, we're going to loosen off the brake lever. We're going to angle this down slightly. When the child sat on the quad, the optimum riding position is with the lever angled slightly downwards. Retighten your brake lever and then make sure the grub screw on the throttle unit is tight. We're going to repeat the process on the opposite side. This time you will need a four allen key to loosen off the lever and a two and a half allen key to loosen off the horn unit. The first thing you'll actually need to do is loosen off the lever and angle it upwards to allow you access to the grub screw to move the horn unit down. Once you're certain you'll be able to get the brake lever to the same angle as the opposite side, move it back out of the way and tighten up the horn unit and then reposition the brake lever, fully tightening it. As you tighten it, make sure the gap at the top and the bottom of the retaining clamp is equal. We're now going to set our front brakes. Firstly, we'll make sure the caliper is tight using a 5 allen key. We need to set the pad on the wheel side as close as possible to the disc without it touching. Using the adjust at the top and the bottom, move the caliper over as required. Also make sure the gap is equal at the top and bottom to ensure equal pad wear in the future. Once we're happy with that side, use an 8 spanner and a 2.5 allen key to wind the centre bolt in closer to the pad so that it's as close as possible to the disc without touching it. As we're doing this, we need to keep spinning the front wheel over and applying the front brake to make sure that it's braking efficiently. Once we're happy that this side is set correctly, we'll then repeat the process on the opposite side.
Now that we've set the front brakes on both sides, we need to make sure they're pulling equally. So spin both wheels over and apply the front brake. If one wheel bites before the other and locks up, it will cause the quad to pull to the left or the right. We're now going to adjust the tracking on the quad. Using a 13 spanner, loosen off the track or end nuts. One side will be a left hand thread, one side will be a right hand thread. By rotating the track rod, we alter the angle of the wheel. This is towing out, and this is towing in. We need to set the tracking so that it is neutral. To do this, stand behind the vehicle and make sure the steering is straight, and then look down the edge of the back wheel to the front wheel to make sure they're in line with each other, adjusting the track rod accordingly. Small adjustment makes a big difference. Keep making sure your steering is straight and checking down the line of the rear wheel until you're happy with the tracking. Once you're happy with the position of the front wheel, hold the track rod in the centre, wind the nuts out against the track rod end and then fully tighten them. Repeat the process on the opposite side of the quad. Now I'm going to make sure our front wheels are tight. To make sure there's no side to side play in the wheel at the top and bottom, but that the wheel is not over tightened. If we over tighten the wheel, it will cause it not to spin freely, the bearings will overheat on the quad and eventually fail. Once we're happy with the tension, apply some stud lock to the end of the threads and repeat the process on the opposite side. We've now fully assembled our quad and need to charge it before the first use. Remove the cover from the charge point on the battery and remove your charger from the box. As you can see the cables are coiled up. Remove the ties from around the cables as it can cause the wiring inside them to overheat if they're tangled together. You'll see there is a notch in the charger and a notch in the charge point. Make sure these are lined together and then tighten the lock ring. Unravel your plug ends and attach it to the charger and remove the plastic cover over the plug pins and plug it into the mains. When you turn your charger on, the charger will flash green for a second before charging to red to show that it is charging. Leave the quad on charge for 12 hours before disconnecting it for the initial charge, even if your charger turns to green. Once it is fully charged for 12 hours, disconnect the charger, replace the cover over the charge point and then connect your electrical cable into the battery casing and your quad is now ready to use. And that's how you build your new vehicle. I hope you found this guide useful. Now let the fun begin.